today we have a treat. I'm gonna talk about hummingbirds and I'm gonna talk about flowers in your garden, on your deck, on your patio, as well as feeding hummingbirds out of a feeder and what you can do to attract them to your property because it's really easy even if you make your own feeders and you can make all kinds of feeders that you can see here they love whether it's those peanut butter cups you just saw or the dots that cost pennies but hummingbird feeders that will attract the hummingbirds because they know the feeders and when they see them they will come dive bombing down no matter what the feeders are you've got there, once they start flying around and they see that food, they'll come. And flowers, of course, all kinds of flowers are important and so is water. Keep that in mind because water and food and shelter, well, that brings the hummingbirds to you. So keep the flowers around if you can, whether it's in your garden or the deck. These are zinnias and they love zinnias. You just saw columbine. And I also have hummingbirds lunch, which is a kufia. I believe having a good mix, whether it's flowers or hummingbird feeders, brings the hummingbirds. And once they're happy and they have everything they need, they will have nests. Yes, I even had this little gal have six nests on my windowsill. And the main thing is, if they've got the food, they will come back. And you know what else? If they have female babies, they always remember, they have great memories. They may not be able to smell that well, but they have perfect eyesight and perfect little memories. So the females, along with the males too, will come back to where they were born. And that's how we ended up with just a few, and now we're into the thousands. As far as flowers, the type of flower isn't even that important. You can get perennials, or you can get annuals. Perennials to me are better because you can put them in a pot and have them for years. So why have the extra work? But they will come to so many different types of flowers. They love something that has kind of a tube look to them, but they love penstemons, lupin, fuchsias, zinnias, oh, salvias, they absolutely love. It doesn't matter what type or what color, because color they'll go for purple and orange and yellow and red and whatever color you put out, pink, they'll come to it. As you can see here with the peanut butter cups, the color doesn't matter. Sage is another one, a beautiful purple flower usually. That will be gorgeous. Hollyhock, daylilies. And what this little guy is feeding on is hummingbird's lunch, which is the kufia. Notice the trumpet shape. They love trying to get their beak into it to get the nectar. A lot of trumpet shaped flowers have more nectar than pollen. They even come to my geraniums and they might be getting a little bit of pollen from those. Not the best for them as far as food, but they still look. This was one of my original hummingbird feeders, picked it up at a thrift store. Started with a couple birds and before you knew it, I had a ton of them. But now I do offer a whole lot more. We try to get flowers as many different types as we can around the property. These are red cannas that grow in Gary's garden and the hummingbirds adore them. Even citrus trees, remember that, they like this. And look, a tomato plant taking some pollen from the tomato flower, isn't that cool? They will go to many types of flowers, so you put what you want. And sometimes they're not going to the flower for nectar or pollen at all. Here, they're going to sow thistle. And you know what this little guy is doing? Or little girl, I should say? She's collecting as much of that soft fuzz as she can feels like cotton, and she is lining her nest with it, giving her eggs a nice soft cushion, and when those babies hatch, they'll be so warm and cuddly in that nest, all from flowers that had turned into seed. And here, this is my nectarine tree. They love different types of fruit trees. They want flowers that are open-faced. So if you got roses and they were big and full, they wouldn't be able to feed on that. They go through my garden, and when my brassicas, my broccoli, my collard, my kale go to flower, they love pulling out the nectar and the pollen out of there. And they're also picking up some tiny insects they find in there because of course, insects are also part of their diet. Keep that in mind. It's not always pollen or nectar that they're looking for. They eat aphids. And they'll go into spider nests as well to take out the little flies that get in there that they just love. Flowers of any type they're attracted to. And here on my variegated lemon tree, look at that. Even the flower that is not completely opened, 
that little girl is gonna go in there and try to get as much as she can. Flowers are so important for them. If you can, it's really nice to put some flowers out. And keep in mind, buy the type of flower you want, but think of trumpets and think of the flower that with an open face. Like I said, a rose is too bunchy. You can't get in there. But with a rose that maybe has an open type face and you can see the pollen, they can get into those type of flowers. And that goes with most of the flowers that you would be putting around your garden or deck or wherever you're going to put it. We get a basket of fuchsias. They would love that. And like I said, citrus trees, they get a lot of nectar out of that. And that's one thing they're all over our citrus trees. And they're all over our gardens looking for flowers of all different colors and all different types. They are not picky and they will check them out. Maybe they'll find that little insect in there they want to eat as well. And our aloe veras, look at this. That little guy will go way underneath and try to reach as far as he can with his long beak and his extra long tongue. And in there, he gets a treat of wonderful nectar in there. So that's a special treat when it comes to aloe veras. And they'll go up into the trees and look around all around here because all the flowers are important to them. They collect different types of food and nectar and pollen from different types of trees. So offering them flowers as well as hummingbird feeders is very important because this will bring them in. If they don't see your feeder, they'll see your flowers. And hibiscus are so big and open. See how the face of the flower is open? That's what they love. And in there, they're getting a lot of pollen in there and they pick around there. And here's my moringa tree with beautiful white delicate flowers. The hummingbirds are all over the moringas all the time and they'll even sit in there. They just love it. This is apple ice. This is a ground plant, but it's hanging on the wall. The perfect position for this particular flower. This hummingbird doesn't have to go to the ground to collect. This hummingbird gets to fly along the wall and go through each flower to see what treat they can find inside. Isn't that cool? And as far as hummingbird feeders, it doesn't have to be expensive. This is a dollar hummingbird feeder. You can get it at Dollar Tree, 99 cent store. But I add on a simple little wire. You can even use a bread tie. Just twist it around the flower. And now, if a hummingbird wants to sit, they can sit. And if they don't want to, well, they don't have to. I do have videos on how we can alter these hummingbird feeders. But I think it's great to give them a choice. Wouldn't you want a choice if you go into a restaurant, whether you're gonna sit or stand? I don't think you're gonna stand in a restaurant. But here you can see how they can sit. One has the ability to sit, the other one, not interested. He just wants to hover there and get what he wants. So they all feed differently. But I love giving them the choice of whether they sit or stand or hover or whatever they wanna do. And then look at this one, went from one seat to the other. They think they're flowers, so they're checking them all out. This used to be my window. Yeah, three feeders. Actually, I had none. There was one on the kitchen window, and this is the breakfast room window. Originally, just a few years ago, there was no feeders on this window. Just the kitchen window, as I was saying. But when the little gal had her nest there and her babies, well, that wasn't going to work, so I started adding on feeders, and things are changing as time goes on. Here it went from one to two, to three, to four, and I even put dots out because they love different types of feeders, and there they are. It was simple, it was nice, and that's what it is now. Actually, it was last season in the winter, but now with more babies, I don't know what will be this year. I hope I don't have to triple up what I've got. I'm already buying my sugar in 25 and 50 pound sacks, but if they do multiply and stay, well, they do, and that's okay with me, but look at that. One feeder to what you see there. Things have changed. It used to be simple back then, but it's so beautiful. There's nothing nicer than sitting and having a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and just watching thousands of hummingbirds hover around. So think about how you want to set it up, whether you're buying a feeder or whether you're going to make one. These were made out of ice cream containers, and this is one of their favorites. They love sitting there and feeding. The tray is underneath, and it's a simple way to feed. Some will hover, and some will sit. I love giving them all kinds of choices. And as you noticed, I can put these ice cream containers on a plate of water, and that will keep the ants away. 
as far as bees, they can't get into the ice cream containers. Now, some of these, you will may have to get a certain model. Walmart has their own that the bees cannot get into. And then you've got First Nature, which I like, but the holes are larger. So bees can get in, but the Orioles can feed too. Fortunately, it's only once in a while that the bees will come around. Usually they don't bother the feeders, but look at the window, how it used to be and how things have changed. And that's all you have to remember is a quarter cup of white granulated sugar and one cup of water, please. No dye, no honey, no juice. They cannot metabolize that. As the Smithsonian and the Hummingbird Society says, only white granulated sugar. Again, a quarter of a cup of white granulated sugar and one cup of water. That's it, mix it up. I've got videos how to do it if you don't know how to do it. But it's very simple and this is what they love. Keep some bird baths around if you can. They love running water and they need a place where they can land and really scrub. They got a lot of stuff on them. Pollen is sticky and yes, even nectar. So they need a place where they can get that all off their feathers because they are so tiny. They don't want that weight on them and they need to stay clean to keep healthy. The first ball I bought and this one I made. They love balls of different types. Go check out the turkey baster. It is amazing how they love to stand on top and just wash. And keep in mind, they're so tiny that here in the garden, they scrub and wash on collard leaves. So it doesn't take much, but they just don't want to be submerged in water. They want it trickling down. But this little guy is going to use a leaf. Isn't that adorable? So I hope I gave you some information and thoughts on how to bring the hummingbirds. So with that, have a wonderful day and don't forget to eat what you grow. And oh yes, we have the Orioles too, nesting and having babies around here. Bye-bye.